Hello everyone, Arash Jafarzadeh here, and in the previous video we had a little introduction to our game development series coming up, and we talked about how it can be really beneficial to learn about coding and be a lot of fun. So you're going to learn in this video how to get everything ready to rock for our video game. And uh, first thing you're going to need to do is download all of the source images. I created a whole bunch of sprites that you can use for this project. Uh, feel free to use your own as well, but this can be a good starting point. Once you've downloaded all those sprites, the little images, I'm going to ask you to organize them just like this. So you have your background stuff, boss, enemy, explosions, and TKD guy. And uh, put all the images in the appropriate folder. It's really important to be as organized as possible because we're going to be working with a lot of different files and if everything's uh, all over the place it's going to be a big headache for you and you'll run into a lot of problems so be organized once you've done this it's time to dive into flash so we're going to go ahead and open that up down here we're going to be working with action script 2.0 uh, 3.0 would be cool too but it's a little more legwork and i think for you know, beginner students 2.0 is probably the easier way to go. So we're going to go ahead and create this in ActionScript 2.0. Really quick, we have my document title here. I haven't named it yet. It's called Untitled. You see here it says Scene 1. That is my current location. We'll talk a little bit about that later on. This big white box here is the stage. This is where I'll be uh, doing a lot of work and just where you see all the actions and animations happen. Down here we have our timeline. Each of these are little frames. I have one keyframe at the beginning here. Uh, I have one layer. I can add layers or remove them. And on the right side here I have my properties window. And this gives me, currently it's showing me the properties for the stage. And, or I guess my document. And on the right tab here it says library. And this tab shows me all of my objects that are going to be used in this project. We don't have any currently. We have our toolbar on the right side here so I can access my tools. A couple of uh, little tips. If you're working on this project and your windows kind of go haywire and everything's all over the place and you can't find any or anything and it just it looks wrong, you can go up here to window and change your workspace here. Now, there are different styles or different workspaces that you can use. Uh, it's basically just the way it's organizing all the windows for you. For this video, I'll be working with Essentials. And uh, anytime that things get messed up like this, just go to Window, Workspace, and Reset Essentials, and it will put everything back to normal for you. So the first thing we're going to need to do is import all of those objects, all those little sprites, images, into our library so that we can work with it in Flash. Now I'm not going to import all of them just yet. We're going to import in just the TKD guy, the Taekwondo guy, and so that way he can walk left and right, and that's about it to start out. So to do that, we're going to need to go to File, Import, and then to Library. Once you're here, we're going to go ahead and go to my desktop. I'm going to double click on the folder wherever you saved it. And I'm going to double click on the Take One Guy folder here. And uh, we have all the different sprites. Here's, this is for him when he's jumping and spinning in the air. These are the ones for him just standing in place. He opens and closes his eyes. Uh, this one is his walk cycle. This is when he's slashing his sword. This is when he's hurt. So we're just going to import in the ones with him standing and him walking for now. So I'm going to click and drag my mouse in this white area and highlight all five of these files and click open. Once I go in my library, I'll see all of those GIF images in my library. So we're going to uh, keep this organized and I'm going to actually create a folder and I'm going to call it TKD guy and I'm going to put all the TKD guy images in the TKD guy folder and again this is just so that I am nice and organized if I click this little arrow it'll expand that folder and I can see all the files in there the other thing that we're going to need to do is to create a movie clip 
with an, a movie clip uh, object where uh, it shows the Taekwondo guy standing in place with the animation and one of the Taekwondo guy walking. So what that means is, is there's going to be a movie clip with an animation of him walking his entire walk cycle and there will be a separate movie clip of him just standing. So to get started with that I'm going to go ahead and go up here to insert new symbol. I'm going to name it TKD and standing. Now uh, it's not case sensitive or anything like that for now we're just naming it uh, you know in our library so we can identify it when we need to uh, grab it but don't worry too much about the name at this time. Down below, it's going to ask us for the type. There are three types we can choose from, movie clip, button, or graphic. Graphic is usually used for an animation that's non-interactive. A button is a class where you can click on it, you can you know, do things with your mouse to it, basically, um, and that's about it. And the movie clip is very interactive. I can you know, uh, make an object on my stage that can detect, hit it detect hits, uh, it can walk up and down, left, right, all kinds of cool things to, that we can do to it. So we're going to click movie clip in this case and click OK. Now we've just been transported into the um, object or in the symbol TKD man standing. That's where we are. We're no longer on the stage anymore. I can go back to the stage by clicking scene one and now I'm back on the stage. If I double click right here on this little gear where it says TKD man standing, it'll take me back inside the movie clip and it says my current location right there. Well, what I need to put in here is the TKD guy standing. So I'm going to click and drag out the GIF image that I had imported from earlier and drop it right here. You'll notice that there's a crosshair in the middle. Um, we are going to position our Taekwondo guy so that he's very close to this crosshair. And the crosshair is very significant. It's the registration point for the uh, movie clip that we're creating. And basically, when we start moving our movie clip left and right, up and down, it's going to move it based on the location of that little crosshair. So, uh, because if we tell it to, you know, go uh, to a certain point on the stage, it doesn't know. I mean, does it want us to move it based on where his eye is, uh, where his hand is, where his foot is, what? So it moves it based on where the crosshair is. Now I'm going to go over here to my selection tool and move it. And I'm going to go ahead and put the crosshair at the bottom of his feet. And I'm going to press Control plus to zoom in a little bit and uh, line it up just like that. And uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier, we didn't look at, if we go to our properties, you'll notice that my frame rate is 24 frames per second, and that, that's fine for this video game. Um, but we're going to need to do some math. So to make it easy for myself, I'm going to go ahead and type in 30 frames per second. And uh, based on that, that'll help me figure out how long I need his walk cycle to last, or his stand cycle in this case. So uh, the second image is of him with his eyes closed. And so how often do I want him to blink? So let's say I want him to go about a second before he blinks. I'm going to go over here to uh, frame 30, right click and insert a blank keyframe. And now I have the take one guy here. He's going to stay on until he gets to frame 30 until he disappears. And at this point, I'm going to want TKD and stand two. I'm going to drop that in there. And uh, here he is with his eyes closed. And you can see the frame before it's open and then closed. Now he's kind of off a little bit. You see he's going up and down. I want to line it up so that that doesn't happen. So I'm going to go down here below and click on this little button that will turn on onion skinning. And what that does is it shows me, this little gray area shows me the frame from before. Um, that's a little bit, you know, the opacity is a little bit lower, but that's the frame before. I can use that to line this guy up perfectly and nudge it with my arrow keys. So now when I go back and forth, let's turn onions getting off. He's in the same spot. He's still off a little bit, but that's pretty close. So I'm gonna move it a little bit. Oh, that made it worse. Almost got it. There you go. Let's 
looks pretty good. So there he is, he opens his eyes. Now I want him to keep his eyes uh, open for about a second. At frame 30, he'll close them. Maybe leave them closed. So he'll do a quick blink. So we'll just let it you know, be there for about 15 frames or so. So I'll insert a blank keyframe there. And uh, what I want to do is drag out. I could drag out, take on old man, stand one again and drop them. But I'm going to actually press delete on my keyboard. An easier way to do it is just go to frame one. I'm going to press control C on my keyboard to copy it. Go over here to the last frame and edit, paste, and place. So you could have just clicked edit, copy, but I did the shortcut. Edit, paste, and place, uh, control shift V, and it'll paste in this first frame at the end. And it just makes it a little bit easier. So I'll have him keep his eyes open again. Maybe another, you know, 25 frames or so. And I insert a blank keyframe there. I'm going to copy the uh, frame with his eyes closed, control C. Go over here, control shift V to paste it in, his eyes close again. And maybe it'll stay closed for another few seconds, so, or another second, less than a second. So insert a uh, blank keyframe there. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna actually remove that last frame. Let's undo that. So I'm gonna have him keep his eyes closed for another you know, 15 or so frames. I'll right click. And what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna insert a regular frame. I don't need a keyframe because that's gonna be the last frame and he's not gonna move again. So it's just gonna play this animation of him opening and closing his eyes just like that. And maybe uh, now that I think about it, maybe I'll have him open his eyes one more time. So I'll insert a blank keyframe here, copy and paste Mr. Take One O Guy. Control Shift V and maybe make him have his eyes open for a while. Maybe I'll have it go to frame 140, insert a frame, and there you have it. So there's an animation of my Take One O guy. I'm going to go back to scene one here, and uh, that's it. I'm done with that. Let's make a second animation of the Take One O guy walking. So I'm going to go to Insert, New Symbol once again, call it TKD Man Walking. And I'll click OK. So this time I'm going to go ahead and drag out, take one old man walking, and drop it here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Control plus is a shortcut, or you can use this drop down menu here. And I'm going to line it up the same way, right, the, right between his feet, and uh, insert a keyframe. So between here and here, where he goes between his feet, I'm just going to take a guess, about six frames, five frames should be pretty good, So, but we can always modify that later. I'm going to go ahead and go to frame six, insert a blank keyframe, drag over, take one do man two, drop it, and again, use onion skinning down below to line it up. Yeah, it looks pretty good, and then I'm going to go forward another uh, few frames so that's frame five there we're going to go over here to frame 11 insert another blank keyframe and drag over the third part of the walk cycle just like that and uh, go forward about five frames and insert a frame not a keyframe but a regular frame now uh, because that's going to be the last part of his walk cycle so we didn't need to go insert another keyframe this time so if i turn onion skinning off and I press enter on my keyboard, there's his walk cycle. It's a little choppy, uh, so I'm gonna nudge it a little bit and line it up a little bit better, but that's the basic idea. Uh, one other thing is his sword and his clothes are white, so we probably should change the color of our background just so we can see what's going on. So I'm gonna use the selection tool to select the background. You can do this here, or you can do it back on the stage. Under Properties, I'm going to go to the Stage Color and choose a slightly off-white color for now. So that way I can actually see his sword and his, his clothing as well. So there you have it. Let's take a look at his walk cycle really quick. Seems like he, that part's okay, but he seems to start low and then go high. So I might bring this a little bit lower here. And maybe I can use onion skinning to line them up a little bit better. Yeah, 
sounds pretty good. So we're going to go back to scene one. And uh, at this point, we have our Taekwondo man standing and our Taekwondo man walking. If I was to drag these two onto my stage and just drop them and press control enter on my keyboard, we'll see that there is his animation uh, with his eyes opening and closing and the one with him just walking in place there. So we're going to fix all this stuff up and make it interactive. Right now it's just an animation, but that's as far as we're going to go with this first part. I'll see you back here for part two.